These are the current odds, and Goldakova right now is at three to two. Gio Ponti, many were thinking Gio Ponti would run in the Breeders' Cup Classic against Zenyatta. Instead, he lands here in the mile, but still, what a tough task to take on Goldakova, seven to two, and Sydney's Candy. You may remember Sydney's Candy from the Kentucky Derby. Five to one on Sid's Candy. As they head to the track, let us head to the track and our horseback reporter, Kate Bradar, on the quarter horse, Baloo. Joe, uh, on the turf course, uh, from the inside to the outside, the color is lush and green, surprisingly so, given the lack of rain we've had over the last five months in Kentucky. It's also firm, but not so firm that you hear a horse's hooves rattle. Uh, you just feel very firm underneath your feet, and it seems to be very even from the inside to the outside. It's pretty amazing, actually, uh, that it does have at least a little bit of give, given the weather. Joe? Thanks for the condition report there. Caton, post parade for the TVG Miles, brought to you by Equibase, the Thoroughbred Industries official database for racing and wagering information. And we lead off the TVG Mile with number one, Beethoven. Now, this is the European version of Beethoven, trained by Aiden O'Brien. There was an American based horse with the same name who was part of the 2009 Triple Crown scene. Starting off with a couple of big long shots. Beethoven at 42 to 1. The number two horse society's chairman is at 51 to 1. They are the two longest shots in this field. Julian Leperu will be aboard this horse. He was second to Gio Ponte last time in the Shadwell Mile. The three is Gio Ponte. A year ago, he was the older horse and turf champion. In fact, last year in the Breeders' Cup, he ran second behind Zenyatta in the Classic. Now he goes up against the other legendary female in Goldakova, Gio Ponte right now, seven to two. In the number four, Court Vision, you get a horse who was beaten only a length and a half by Goldakova last year in the Breeders' Cup mile and has made two and a half million dollars in his career, yet he's 13 to one right now. It shows you how tough this field is, his jockey, Robbie Alvarado. The five, Delegator, took a shot in this race last year. He ran fifth. Frankie Dottori has the mount. He has one win in 16 attempts in the TVG Breeders' Cup mile. Another shipper from Europe, the number six, Paco Boy, knows Goldakova well. He's run against Goldakova four times. He's lost to Goldakova four times, but all of them have been close. Can he turn the tables here in America? The seven, the usual QT, California bred. Went to Canada, ran second to Port Vision, the Woodbine Mile. The usual QT won six races in a row at one point in 09. And now we get to our two speed horses. Number eight with the white face is Get Stormy and Javier Castellano. Get Stormy, last time out, was fourth in the Shadwell Mile that Gio Ponti won, but he should be close to the lead chasing this horse. Sydney Candy, who's owned by weight loss expert Jenny Craig. At least for the time being, he is. There's been a pending sale that hasn't gone through. Sydney's Candy ran 17th here at Churchill in this year's Derby. There's the start of your show, Gold Akova. And right now, as far as I'm concerned, here's the big question. So far this weekend, Europeans, 13 of them have run. None have won, and only midday finished in the money. She was second at 4-5 to five yesterday in the Philly and Mayor Turf. And rounding out the field for the TVG mile, the 11 Proviso, the other gal, like Goldakova, five-year-old mayor, coming off a win in the First Lady at Keeneland. And you see that E cube, that signifies that she has the highest E speed figure her last time out among all these in this field. Look at that crowd that has now grown trackside here. It's a little bit of a chilly day. It's a very sunny day, but it's chilly. So thousands inside. And then as the horses come to the track, they fill in against the rail. And of course, the most popular place to be before post time, right up there at those betting windows, Kenny and Hank. Oh, always. Huh. So three to two is the betting right now in Golden Cove. You can take nothing away from her, although, as Randy pointed out, the Europeans have not fared well so far in this little two-day meet. Maybe this turf course is a little hard for what they're used to. Given all that, I'm going to take a shot on Gio Ponte, who's run so well in every race. I can relate to Gio Ponte. I, too, have been chasing women my entire life unsuccessfully. 
Well, but Giaponte's I, but Giaponte, 50% success. He, and he's a natural miler. You know, they considered the classic for him again. But I think this is the right spot for him. We'll see. And the fact that the Euros have not performed well on this turf course. But Paco Boy, who has also been chasing Goldakova, might benefit from the fact that he may like the firmer turf course over here and gets a new rider in Ryan Moore. And that's who I was gonna use, but I'm nervous again about this turf course. But I've got Paco Boy with Gio Ponte and, and Goldakova. And let's talk Sydney's can candy for a moment. One race on the turf for Sydney's candy broke the course record for a mile and a 16th at Del Mar. So I'm gonna use the six with exactas and uh, with Sydney's candy Paco Boy and Golda Cove. Sydney's Candy could change the dynamic of the race. First time turf having that big run. Maybe this horse tries to run off and changes the complexion of the race as to when the others have to make their move. Golda Cove, I can call her Goldie for short, so we can bond. <laughs> Randall all over the touch screen. Hank is down in the mile. Yeah, Kenny, I'm, I'm trying to take notes here. I'm trying to pay attention. So let, let's play some video games here. Now, we, we just heard who Hank liked. He had a box, and, and we can kind of mess around here a little bit. If we if we just say, okay, what's the best case scenario for Hank, and Goldakova finishes out of the top three. Well, Hank had a 3-6 with Gio Ponte over Paco Boy, and right now that $2 exacta is paying $68.60. And Hank also, also thought that Sydney's can had a chance to run pretty well. Well, if you get a Sydney's candy on top of, let's say, a Paco boy, and you have Goldakova out of the top two, that $2 exacta pays a nice fat $168. And Hank was playing more than $2 exacta. So best case scenario, looks pretty good, Hammer. Hank often plays more than a $2 exacta. <laughs> as we get set here for the TVG Breeders' Cup Mile. Let's bring in our European expert, Nick Luck. Nick, a uh, thoroughbred owner himself, one of the foremost racing analysts in Britain. I know Goldakova means the world to the European racing fans, Nick. Joe, European hearts need a lift, and hearts and minds are with this extraordinary Goldakova. You're right to major on lack of Euro success at this meet thus far, but there simply hasn't been a European as good, as talented, as tough, as durable as this mare. She holds the all-time European record for grade one wins. More noteworthy, perhaps, though, when we compare her with Zenyatta, for example, she's defeated Colts seven times. She's got a tough post today. She's overcome that before, you heard, from Freddie Head with Janine. She's been training as well, if not better, than ever. There is the trainer who rode Miesque to Jewel Breeders' Cup Mile, wins success in the 80s. The only point he made to me earlier in the week was, it's all gone so well, I almost can't believe it will have the happy ending that we all want. But a measure of today's success significance is that she could win an historic third Breeders' Cup mile, yet, Joe, she might still end up as best supporting actress. Exactly, Nick, and that is the point that we should really stress, that the connections of Goldakova and many in the press corps that has come over here to the U.S. from Europe have said, hey, Goldakova is being slighted here this week because of the national phenomenon that has taken part with Zenyatta. But turf horses in general in the United States take second stage to dirt horses because the money is on the dirt, the excitement, the notoriety. So I don't think it's so much that it, it's her. It's just the surface that she runs on in Americans. Well, like it's, speed it's and the dirt reality racing. of what's happened in our country. Yeah. Zenyatta on 60 Minutes and Sports Illustrated and all over ESPN now. She's gotten all the attention. Janine. Well, Joe, there's another Euro in here, and his name is Paco Boy. He's from England, but he's been deserted here in this country by his trainer, groom, and jockey. None of them have come over here with him for various reasons. His trainer, Richard Hannon, elected not to come as he's had bad luck in the Breeders' Cup. He's run three horses, of which one finished 10th, one was eased, and one broke down and died. That horse, Mr. Brooks, was actually the impetus for the pre-race veterinary exams and health checks that we now have in place for all Breeders' Cup runners. So while his fortunes haven't been so favorable, and he may not know it, Hannon has had a positive impact on the event. 7-1 right now on Paco Boy. Jay Pribbon, what of the other battle of the sexes? How about the mayor Proviso? 
That's right. There is a second filly in this race, or actual mare in this race, and that is Proviso running against the boys in this race, as is Gold Dakota. And I'll tell you, Bill Mott can be wound a little tight sometimes, but he has been very, very loose and goosey all week long. And we saw, I think, maybe the reason why yesterday when Unrivaled Bell won. And we're, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Proviso and Al Khali, who's coming up in the Breeders' Cup turf, do. But I'll tell you what, Joe, the boys in this race weren't very chivalrous. They're making these girls be the last two through the stall doors. Air number 10 and 11. All right, Randy and Jerry, let's talk about what to look for here in the mile with strategy, pace, etc. Sydney's candy from the outside post <laughs> won't affect him. He's going to be off and running. Uh, he might get a little competition up front from Get Stormy, but those are the pace setters and primarily Sydney's candy. Now, Goldakova, the reason she is so unbeatable is because she can do it so many different ways. She's got different gears, and, and Pellier, her jockey, can either chase those two out and tuck her in behind the speed. He can he can elect to ease further back like he did last year. There's so many places he can be. I don't think it affects her either, but Proviso, that's the mare that has the worst draw here because of her style. She's not speed. She's not a dead closer. She's somewhere in the middle. And if it weren't for the draw, I mean, I, I still think she has a chance, and I, I would have thought she would have a heck of a chance here. I think, honestly, my opinion, personally, Proviso's just as good a horse as Gio Ponte. But, yeah, the, the draw does work uh, to her disadvantage. And I, I'm really just curious to see, given the way the Europeans have been performing here the last couple of days, how Goldakova is, is going to handle the turf. Well, she steps onto it now as they will go to that starting gate and low to see if Goldakova can make history. The five-year-old mayor as Freddie Head looks on. You know, in the USA, we make such a big deal when the females race against the males. Not so much in Europe. Ten starts against males. Seven times she has defeated them. As you see, Beethoven loading here. Goldakova trying to become the first horse to be a three-time winner in the Breeders' Cup. It has never happened. This now the 27th running. As there she is with Olivier Pellier. The usual QT heads in. Gio Ponti, perhaps the best American hopeful, is the number three. He's at seven to two. Goldakova set to go off at six to five. And for the call of the TVG Breeders' Cup Mile, Goldakova's chance for history. Here's Trevor Denman. She sure does, Joe. We'll know in a few moments, does Goldakova make Breeders' Cup history with an unprecedented three wins. She was one of the first ones in the gate, and she's standing very, very quietly. Last couple to come forward now. Get Stormy has gone in. They are now joined by Sydney's Candy. And then the last one will be Proviso to come to the outside gate. They'll all be set. Proviso goes in. All set now for the TVG mile. And now... Uh, Away they go to another perfect start. Goldakova not quick into stride though, she's dropping in mid pack. Fastest into stride here is Sydney's Candy, and Sydney's Candy all alone out here on the lead. Get Stormy's racing along second, Beethoven kicks through at the rail. The usual QT is pulling very hard. The usual QT wants to go on now, he's pulled his way up to be a joint second. Now here's Goldakova, caught a little wide in the turn, and the white cap has given them five length start. Just in front of that, Delegator who's going up closer, caught vision as the white blinkers down at the rail. They are followed by Paco Boy, who's back fourth last, gives them seven length start. Proviso's at the back of the leading group. And then we come back to Gio Ponti. Gio Ponti's 10 lengths off the leaders. And another four back to society's chairman. They run towards the half mile pole now. And Sydney's Candy's ensured a good pace. Sydney's Candy by a length to get stored. Beethoven's tucked in at the rail in third. On the outside of that, Frankie Dottori and Delegator are fourth. Then the usual QT is losing ground. Now here's Goldakova back six. And let's see, Goldakova has seven to make up. Goldakova's going to have to kick it in. They turn for home, and Sydney's Candy still strong on the lead. And Sydney's Candy gets a tap on the shoulder, goes on for home. Now Goldakova's unwinding her right in the center of the track. Goldakova's let loose. She's flying. Sydney's Candy, the usual QT. this afternoon here's Paco Boy late but no Goldakova a true champion three Breeders Cup wins Olivia Pellier the perfect ride Goldakova has won Gio Ponti the usual QT and Paco Boy lined up to chase her home utterly amazing you talk about flipping a switch and just making it happen Goldakova 
makes it happen and makes history here. The first three-time winner in Breeders' Cup history. That was breathtaking. It, it was for, for a couple of different reasons. First, of all the complaints of the turf, too firm, too, coming up too much, it didn't bother her. But more than anything else, European horses are trained to cover up in the middle of horses or behind the pack, ease out, and make their run. And if they stay on the outside, they usually stay rank and never finish well. She was outside, forced out all the way heat. Pellier could never find a spot to get her in behind horses. It didn't bother her. It didn't bother Pellier. And it even looked when she was struggling, it looked like she was struggling on the far turnaround. And he was never worried. Here she came through the stretch. Well, he was never worried. But there are about 60,000 people here that probably had a thought of, oh, no. Wow, was that impressive. When Zenyatta does it, she does it gradually. Yes. Here, here comes Zenyatta. Right. Here she comes. Is she going like to get a train. there? Here she comes, like a train. When Goldakova does it, it's like, zoom. It, <laughs> it is a is. burst. It is it a is burst. Bullet. Let's go back and show you, as they are starting to celebrate here, let's go back and show you this magnificent White ride. White Cat, Pellier, doesn't break great, kind of flat-footed, um, but she's not a speedster, but... Why did here he's hoping to, to filter in between flights of horses? It just never materialized. Delegated with the Tory on the inside knows he's not going to let her in. And now they start to slow the pace of a bit, and the, and the race doesn't string out. You know what? She's just forced about five wide. Hey, look at Dettori even pushing her out a little further. And, that, and that's race riding. He knows he's got to beat her. If he pushes her out and keeps her uncovered, it's a better chance. Goes into the far turn, about two and a half furlongs left in the race. He's, he's made his way to about two and a half pounds off the rail, and he's creeping up right now. When he turns for home, he tips her out into the, about the five path for clear running, and look at this mare do her thing. She goes from two and a half, three lengths behind, to two lengths in front and an eighth of a mile. And she's a tiny thing, the polar opposite of Zenyatta. Picks him up and lays him down in a hurry. Freddie Head also rode Miesk to back-to-back -back mile wins. Uh, Miesk is the best miler I've ever seen, but now you have to wonder. He thinks that Goldakova is even better than Miesk, so, wow. Freddie Head. There he is. Look at how much this means to him. Listen to this. <laughs> That's cool. And we now welcome to our ESPN set the great Goldakova and Olivier Pellier. Congratulations, you made history. Yeah, exactly. I I've got to ask you, were you ever concerned? No, uh, she is lovely, Philly, and for my, uh, for my wife, she's the birthday, I said, I win for you. And I'm lucky you don't ride this way, so you don't have, to have a chance to win. Now, Frankie looked like he was kind of keeping you out around the first yeah, turn. Yeah, exactly, and I don't turn well, I don't want to fight with her. And I leave a chance to, to go, and after she's relaxed, I just cover, and after that, the, the stretch is wonderful, but she's, she's just flying. Awesome. Congratulations. And the best Philly in the world now. Uh -huh. now <laughs> For now, she is, Olivier, indeed, a three-time winner. We will see what the American gal does in the Classic. Janine. Well, we are fighting through the crowd here. Freddie had just absolutely surrounded coming down to meet his filly. And, Freddie, you just had tears in your eyes as you were describing her. What is this moment like for you? It's very emotional for me. I've been the first jockey to win with a, a mare two times, twice. And now, now I'm a trainer of a mare winning three times, something you can't dream of. I mean, it's, um, it's quite unreal, unreal. How good is this filly? We don't know, we don't know. She's amazing, amazing. She can do anything, she's just, um, she's, she's extraordinary, extraordinary. I don't have the words. <laughs> Congratulations, Freddie. You know, to a certain extent, there really aren't words that could ever describe that last furlong of that race when she just makes a decision and in an instant explodes and captures the win. Pellier has a message to the Zenyatta fans Did in the crowd ever? right now. <laughs> Did he ever send a message? He just told the national TV audience what he thinks of the comparison of Goldakova and Zenyatta. When you hear Freddie Head talk about her, I mean, you, you heard the, the reverence in his voice. And around the barn, Goldakova is not a mare to be messed with. She's very territorial. She doesn't like people going into her stall. And she 
makes that known. She'll bite anything that walks by if they get a little too close. And to put, it, put this into perspective, Freddie Head in the 80s was one of the most sought after jockeys in France. I mean, he was, he rode at a very high level, so, and not to mention that he won on uh, Niesk on two Breeders' Cups in a row, so he has a very, very good opinion of a good horse. Wow. Let's show you the official prices of the TVG Breeders' Cup mile with Goldakova doing exactly what she was expected to. And how about Gio Ponti? Gio Ponti now, two years in a row, finishes behind a female horse on Championship Saturday. Last year in the Classic behind Zenyatta, and now runs second to Goldakova in the mile here. Jay? And Joe, I talked to the trainer of Gio Ponte, Christoph Clement, after the race, and he said he was just really happy with the way his horse performed. He was glad that they ended up going in the mile as opposed to the Classic, which had been under consideration. He said, I guess ladies first and then he said you know I really wish Freddie head was still riding not training <laughs> great job that Freddie head has done he nailed the exacta too he said Gio Ponte was the horse he was most worried about Goldakova delivers on everything everybody has thought her to be this year heard Freddie head say better than last year well, you be the judge. Watch this turn of foot. Flying by Sydney's candy. And everybody celebrating the victory. You think it means something just to the trainers and jocks? How about the grooms? is the purity of this sport the passion of victory and victory is once again gold